Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Stephen Wright with us and he is from healthygut.com. And we are all about talking about how to make your gut healthy. So Stephen, welcome. Thanks for my, thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah. So let's talk about what got you into this whole idea of, I love your slogan, it's poop better, think better, feel better, which that is the best line ever. Because it's true. If you're pooping better, you're thinking better, you're feeling better. If you're not pooping good, you feel like you're in the dump. So what even got you into this whole idea of healthy gut? I've had lifelong digestive issues myself uh, right from birth, and then they got worse over time. And you know, it's a it's a it's a challenging story full of lots of pains and ups and downs of not uh, getting well through Western medicine and kind of having to fight my way back to health. And then I just happen to be somebody who can't let things rest. So I want to know why. Like I, for a long time, I was uh, bloating after any meal. It didn't matter if it was chicken and salad or burgers and beer, and I would have uh, so much pain that I would cry. And then, of course, if you're that bloated, the best thing you can do for yourself is fart. But if it smells terrible, then you know you have all the shame and your coworkers don't like you and, and all this stuff. And so um, I, I tried to get help. I, I didn't get much help. Uh, and then I started changing my diet, trying to do supplement modifications, I ended up getting trained in uh, functional medicine. And this whole time I was sort of blogging and writing eBooks and teaching people about what I was learning uh, about gut health, about dietary interventions, about the possibilities outside of the Western medical system. Mm. Well, I've got some listener questions and I'm going to jump right into them. This first one is from someone in Florida named Janice Williamson. She says, I'm doing great with fasting. I've lost all but the last 20 pounds, and I need some suggestions on what I need to do to lose the last 20. My gut is a mess. I think from all my Google research, I think I have liver flukes and H. pylori. I am taking a probiotic, and I feel awful. My poop is an awful color of a gray kind of clay color that's a brownish I don't, I don't know what she, she just kind of goes on about what her poop color is. And then she just, they, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the bottom line is she's saying her poop color is terrible. It's like a, in between like a gray and like a weird color clay and she's feeling terrible. So any ideas of that? And she, she thinks she has H. pylori and she feels like she has liver flukes all from Google searches. Yeah, well, there's we're to learn a lot about each other on this on this show. So after college, I was about 245 pounds. Uh, when you met me a few weeks ago, I'm I'm roughly around 200 right now. And so my college graduation pictures, my face is like a beach ball. I just when I get heavy, I get just a round face. And so at the time, I didn't know about gut health. I was uh, having all that bloating, and I used intermittent fasting and a ton of exercise to, to cut from about 245 down to about 225 and then I just got completely stuck. And it wasn't until I actually began to address the underlying mechanisms inside my body, fix my gut and my digestion issues that everything in my body started to relax and it made the the fat loss process much easier and much uh, faster after that, like after that plateau. So one of the reasons why is our body needs nutrients to process daily life, like whether it's DNA damage or the process of fat loss. And so if you're low in amino acids, if you're low in, in fatty acids, if you're low in any of these basic nutrients, your body's going to restrict muscle building. It's going to restrict fat loss because it feels like it's in a, in a state of scarcity. Like it's in a state of holding on to all the resources it has because it has no idea what's coming next. And so... Um, the best way to get all the full range of nutrients is to get that from your your meals, whatever diet you're choosing to eat. Um, and so in order to do that, we have to break down the food and we have to get it into our body. And if you're having bloating, constipation, diarrhea, you know any of these IBS like symptoms, that's like a, a pretty much a red flag saying whatever meal you choose to eat, whether it's a protein shake or a chicken salad or, something like that, 
you're not getting what you should out of that meal and it's going to restrict all the rest of the processes in your body. And so um, I, you know, personally, everything you eat has to literally go through the process of digestion and then into your body. And so I do feel that the gut is sort of the gateway towards health, towards um, whether it be muscle building, fat loss, whatever it might be. And so just starting from a basic, can you properly digest your food uh, can, can really get you a long ways. And um, you may have you know, infections like liver flukes or H. pylori. Um, but regardless, checkers is the way uh, people play health and they typically get mate or they typically have like roadblock after roadblock. Chess is the game you want to play when it comes to health. So checkers would be like, I think I have liver flukes. I'm going to do a parasite cleanse that I see online. Or I think I have H. pylori. I'm going to do this uh, killing tea or whatever. Versus playing chess, which chess, the philosophy, the easiest philosophy is just you're always trying to strengthen your position on the board. And so in this case, if you strengthen your digestion, all the processes around that, a lot of symptoms and weird things that you may think you've figured out can just fade away over the coming months and they may not actually be issues. So for instance, your body is capable of dealing with H. pylori. If it wasn't, everybody would have it and, and it would be like all kinds of problems. But if you can restore your body's immunity and restore your gut, uh, that might fade away. You might not actually have to deal with it. And so that's, I mean, that's how I'd start to approach that. I want you to talk about the different things because it says that she has, goes from gray or clay colored stool to, you know, different kind of browns. And I want you to kind of say like, okay, well, if you have gray or clay colored, you know, does that mean that you have little or no bile? Um, what does the pale color mean? You know, she's obviously not having dark brown poop. And so what do you need to do to, you know, increase the bile flow and kind of talk about that? Yeah, so I... um I wish these things were black or white, but I can't see the world that way. I tried so long. Like this is year 15 of focused on gut health, focused on educating people about digestion. And I wish there was just like a like a stool color that you could just hold up on your phone or on the wall and be like, oh, I'm a little low in this. I'm a little high in this. Um, I, I've, been, I've been that person, right? I started on the patient side and became educated along the way to the place I've gotten now. So like... Um, one time, me and my best friend from college, who I started the company with, uh, we thought we had liver flukes. We thought we were, we were doing a parasite cleanse. And it turns out we were eating crasians, like the the crasians you put on your salad. And then they were just passing through our digestion uh, undigested. And then they were in the toilet. And we're like analyzing our poops and getting all into it. And, and we're like, oh, we definitely have liver flukes. Look at all this stuff. We're killing. And it was like, and then like a few days later, we weren't eating salads at work anymore. And then there was, you know, it was just the crazy. So my point being, if you eat a ton of blueberries, you're going to change the color of your, your poop. If you eat a bunch of vegetables, you're going to change the color of your poop. If you eat uh, fresh food versus processed food, you're going to change the color of your poop. So um, be in relationship with your poop color, but also in relationship to what you were eating the day prior. And so, um, yes, this woman could totally be having some bile stagnation or some enzyme stagnation or both. Um, if that's the case, you would also maybe see like a thin layer of like uh, oily potentially on the toilet. Like you might be able to see some some oil going through, some things like that. So you could try uh, some taurine, some beetroot, some tudka. These are all bile support uh, supplements and see if that really helps. You know, ox bile is also an option if you're uh, you know, doing carnivore diet or, or you're, you're okay with animal stuff. Um, it also could just be low digestive enzymes. And again, if you're not fully breaking down the food, whatever you choose to eat, um, the, the color of your poop is going to change. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that green always means this gray always means that. Um, but you are, like you said, looking for lightish brown to darkish brown, but not like super black brown, if that makes sense. Mm. And then anything else like are that if you're looking at the color of your poop where you'd say, 
this is like a major red flag. Like kind of like what you said, like if you eat beets, you know your poop is probably going to turn out red. Well, if you look it up on the internet, it's going to say, you know, run to the doctor right away because that's a red flag, right? Totally, totally. Well, number one, if you've never Googled the Bristol stool chart, you got to do that as soon as you stop like working out or in the car, whatever you're doing. Like you can pull up on your phone and look at the Bristol stool chart. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I am. Okay, great. So you want to be like a number four. That's ideal. Think of uh, slightly more firm than soft serve ice cream. Um, that's a perfect poop. It should be like you should you should feel the urge to go go sit on the toilet. Uh, you know, I don't know, thirty seconds to a minute later, you you know you evacuate, and um, it should look like this smooth, slightly firmer soft serve ice cream. Maybe a few chunks of it, but you know it could be logs if you want it to be. Um, that's that's like the ideal we're searching for on a regular basis. If it looks like a Snickers bar or a corn cob or something, or if a rabbit pellets, um, or if you're straining, pushing, forcing, those are all signs of constipation. If you're on the other end and it's like soft serve or like even worse, like mush, piles of mush, um, just water, like, you know, watery diarrhea, that's all on the, the loose stool side. And so we want to avoid those extremes. And anything you do from food changes to supplemental changes that gets you more to that middle is going to indicate better digestion, better nutrient absorption from your food, and better defenses against any infections. And so as you're looking at the quality, be on the lookout for, like you said, um, like an oily sheen on the toilet. Be on the lookout for blood or redness that, you know, that could be a hemorrhoid potentially, or it could be indicative of something worse, like um, ulcerative colitis, if you're actually having like full uh, blood in the toilet. Uh, be on the lookout for pieces of food. Like so, a lot of people out there are like, oh, eat your, eat your salads, eat your kale. Guess what? Leafy green vegetables are actually pretty hard to digest. And if you see floating pieces of leafy greens in the toilet, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how that's not how it's supposed to work. Um, we're supposed to break that down and then put it into a log, you know, put it into a brown log. Um, and so that could indicate that's not the right food for you. A lot of people, when they are searching for different types of paleo or uh like on the go diets, including intermittent fasting, they'll start consuming a lot of nut-based products. I don't know if you've ever tried to crush a walnut or an almond in your hand, but it's pretty much impossible. These are a very hard structure. And you're asking your body after you chew it, probably on the go, not like super well done. You're asking your body to turn that into nutrients and you're turning it into, you know, power and stuff for your life. If you see those chunks of of nuts in in your stools in in the toilet, like maybe nuts are not the best food option for you right now, or the way in which you're eating them is just is just not good enough. So those are some of the like things to look out, I would say. Um, I would, I'm never against imaging. So if someone's listening to this, I always say like, be an adult. Like if you're like inside, you're like, I think something's wrong, go get some imaging. Like there are people out there who have been on the internet trying to feel well through all different diets and all different supplements and are not well. And they've never gone in and gotten a colonoscopy and endoscopy or a CT scan or an MRI or an ultrasound. You don't have to start with the, the scope. You could start with an ultrasound. But we we do have, you know, genetic defects. And, you know, one out of 10,000, one out of 100,000 people have a little different placement of their organs. And you could have something going on that you're trying to change with intermittent fasting or diets that is that's not going to work if it's structurally out of place. I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make 
the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order, it's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. So one of the things that we talked about is that with intermittent fasting, I know that for me, sometimes I'll wait until, let's say, two o'clock to eat. Well, at that point, I am literally the most starving that I've ever been. So now, first of all, I already eat fast. So now I'm eating even faster. I'm probably not chewing my food as much as I need to. And... I just am not digesting my food. I could see like food particles in my poop, you know what I mean? Because I I haven't digested it properly. But one of the things you taught me, which I, I can't believe I didn't know from all the podcasts that I've done, is I want you to explain the difference between digestive enzymes and HCL. So describe what both of them are and tell us what the differences are. Yeah. Uh, So your stomach makes acid and uh, HDL is hydrochloric acid. Um, Inside that acid is also some enzymes and some intrinsic factor, basically things to break down your food. That acid is the main driver of motility through the rest of your body and diarrhea or constipation, whether you're on the the high end of the bristle start or bristle tool start or the low end, those are both motility related issues. And stomach acid could be the cause of that. On top of that, stomach acid is there to break down the bugs that are in your saliva, the bugs that are on your food. Um, it detoxifies uh, a lot of inflammatory bacteria and other things that are getting into our bodies on a natural daily basis. And so without the proper amount of acid in your stomach, you're basically like trying to have a fight with one arm tied behind your back. Like everything else about your life is going to be harder. Your inflammation is likely to be higher. Your digestion's probably going to be off no matter what you do. And so stomach acid in the the process of breaking down uh, the food in the stomach is a huge deal. Right after that, the the stomach dumps into the small intestine. And right there at that point, that's where the bile and the, the pancreatic enzymes come in or the digestive enzymes. The pancreatic enzymes are the, the most important ones. And so acid, think of it like it's um, killing, uh, sort of like uh, mushing, <laughs> whatever we don't chew, basically the acid is going to turn into a mush. And then uh, opening up these these molecules, and then enzymes come in, and they're like they're like scissors. They're like cleaving the molecules or the mush into actual nutrients that we can absorb. And so we need both. Without either one, we're going to end up probably having some form of of constipation or diarrhea, bloating, uh, fermentation. It creates the process for SIBO and CIFO and candida, all these things. And so our enzymes are below the stomach. Uh, we have pancreatic enzymes and then we have brush water enzymes. Brush water enzymes are the the enzymes that a lot of people, if you struggle with carbohydrates or FODMAPs or things like that, you probably have some brush water enzyme issues. Um, a lot of bloaters um, have carbohydrate uh, brush water enzyme issues. And so I I wish everything was simple in in the gut and that you could take it all into one pill. But the issue is that some people have low stomach acid and digestive enzyme issues at different ratios, meaning some people are really stressed. Like you said, you're like, it's been, it's been 16 hours. All I want to do is eat this steak or whatever it is in front of me. Um, you are probably in sympathetic, meaning your, your system is in fight or flight. You're very excited and you're on the go for this food. You're going to need more acid than you would probably enzymes at that moment. But if this has been going on for a number of months or a number of years or even longer, you might have done so much internal damage to the system that now your body has been tolerating a low enzyme state. 
And it also needs a bunch of enzymes to begin to break down that, that newly liquefied food from your stomach. And so some people need, you know, three, four capsules of, of an HCL or like an HCL guard, like the product we make. Some people name, you know, five, six. Some people need one, two capsules of an enzyme product, like our whole enzyme product. Some people need five, six capsules. And it can be very different, like one capsule of HCL guard and four capsules of, of holozymes and vice versa. It could be three and three. And so finding that perfect ratio, when you lock it in, I'm telling you, people, it, people are annoyed because I'm telling you, you have to work for your gains. But I'm telling you, if you lock in the ratio of what your body actually is, this is doing the individualized bio individuality that is needed to get that perfect ratio for your body. It's like a light switch. We're not talking like weeks until you feel it. I'm talking days. Once you get that ratio of what your body is low on, you'll you'll your poops are better immediately. Your energy is better immediately. Digestive complaints are down immediately. So what I'm hearing you say is that you need most people probably need the hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. And a lot of people are only taking one. They might only be taking digestive enzymes and they actually need hydrochloric acid, which which helps break down the food and in your stomach. Um, and then the digestive enzymes, they split up the proteins in your small intestines. So you need to have both of them, most likely if you're having major issues. And now what you need to do is you need to take you need to kind of keep titrating up and titrating down. So you might say, okay, I'm going to start with taking two hydrochloric acids and, you know, two digestive enzymes. If that's not working, maybe I bring it up to three. If that's too much, maybe I just take one and one. And did I get that right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And no matter what brand you're using, you will, if you titrate up and titrate down, there is a, there's a ratio there that I'm telling you will will help you uh, almost immediately. You will feel better. Mm. So as far as like, what would you suggest? Would you say like a, a good starting place would be maybe two and two for someone or one and one? Or what would you say is the best way to describe that of what they should what a, start at? Yeah. What I've learned over the last 15 years is everybody has a different personality. And so the personality type that's like the optimizer, the nerd, the maximizer, I would tell them to start with an HCL challenge. So get yourself an HCL and Pepsin product, whether it's our product or somebody else's, I don't care, and do an HCL challenge first and find your ideal HCL dosage and then add in your enzyme product after that. And then titrate up to find your perfect enzyme with your HCL. If you're someone who's not into that sort of like maximizing, go slow, figure it out, you're like, I want results now. I don't want to think about this. I have, you know, four kids and a full time job. I would actually say start with the enzymes first and try like one to six and titrate up and then bring in the HCL slowly after that. So maybe like two enzymes and then one HCL and then four enzymes, two HCL, six enzymes, three HCL, kind of like that. If you're if you're more like, I don't, I don't really want to play this game. I hate this, but I just want results. Yeah. So, you know, I heard that like when you're talking about natural stomach acid, that that's kind of like at a level one. And like lemon juice is like at a two. And like Coke and beer and vinegar, that's like at a three. I, and I might be getting these wrong. I can't remember. It's just something that I remember. And so most people, their stomach acid, because you you want your stomach acid to be at a one. If if you don't have enough stomach acid, which most of us don't, you're gonna look at like if you look at your poop, which by the way, just so everyone knows, and I know this is going to sound disgusting. <laughs> this is so funny. So my son, like he knows, like, I'll just be like, I, like, I like to look at his poop every once in a while, see how he's doing. Da -da. Like my husband and my son are like, okay, babe, do you want to come look at my poop today? You know, because I do. I'm like, okay, let me see. How's everyone doing? I mean, there is not, I'm not joking. Not a day that goes by that if I poop, I'm not like evaluating the poop. Like, I'm not joking. I will take like a straw 
And like, I'm like looking at my poop, evaluating it, da 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 da. Then I just take it, wrap it up, and then put it in the trash can. But I think it's it's just like the most important thing. Like it's just beyond important. And you know, that's why I love your slogan, poop better, think better, feel better. It's like if I'm not feeling good, I know for a fact it's my poop is not right. And I will tell you more often than not, I have massive amounts of undigested poop in the toilet. And so what I'm hearing you say is I need to up, I need to up my HCL or do I need to up my digestive enzymes or both? What would you say? If I have massive amounts of undigested poop, what would you say my major problem is? I, I don't want to, I mean, I can cold read you, but it'd be better if you just said, what what personality type are you more like? Are you more like the uh, the very thorough optimizer? Or are you more like, give me the results now. I don't want, I don't want the science. I just want to feel better. I just want to feel better. But okay. I there's a lot of listeners that are, are the more detailed. So I want you to tell it for them too. Well, well I think, I, I think I, yeah, I think I told my, my, for them, it's still, slow down, do the HCL challenge, find your ideal dosage. You can Google HCL challenge. Uh, essentially, it's you just take one HCL with dinner. Uh, the first day, if you don't feel burning or hotness or any sort of upset, if you do feel that, you just take a little uh, baking soda, like a half teaspoon in water, drink that. It'll nullify the acid. Um, but each day you go up. So day two, you take two pills. Day three, three. Day four, four. Day five, five. And then at some point, let's say day five, you feel that heat, that that burning sensation. You take a little baking soda, you're good to go. The next day and going forward, you know for that meal, that type of meal, you need four capsules of HCL for the proper digestion. And then the next day you start adding in your enzymes, you know, two, three, four, until you're looking in in the toilet and you're like, I don't see anything. Like, this is awesome. Like, I'm like that was a, you know, like a ghost log, right? Like you sit down and you're like, I think I got to go. And then you go and you're like, where did it go? Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, it should be so easy and awesome. So that's like the really uh, in the weeds, slow way to figure it out. That's quote unquote, the ideal way. Not everybody likes to work with that. Not everybody's personality works that way. So for you, what I would say, you're probably you're going to b- get a bigger bang for your buck if you start upping Eight, uh, your whole your whole enzymes or whatever enzyme you have faster. So um, I would just start going every day, just doubling two, four, six until you're feeling better. At some point, you'll reach a point where more enzymes don't really do much, which is why I typically don't say more than six because that that amount of enzymes is sufficient, no matter the company, to break down the majority of any meal you're eating, um, and then slowly bring the HCL up from there. But again, it it is an interplay between the two. And um, the thing with the HCL products is that you can have that burning hot sensation and you have to go more thorough with it. So for, for people who want results right away and they don't want to like worry about a burn if they're, you know, they got to like eat and then take the kids to soccer or they got to eat and go to a work thing. Like you don't want to have to like have baking soda around or worry if you're about to have heartburn. So it's just easier to up your enzymes faster. You guys, I'm so excited. We are doing a free masterclass for you. It's actually on nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. That's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. And it's going to be all about how to get rid of your gut infections, how to get rid of parasites. If you have painful digestion, if you're suffering from poor sleep, if you've got constant exhaustion, massive joint pain, or skin issues, then you need to get rid of the parasites that are holding your body hostage. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're thinking, I don't have parasites, I don't have parasites. Yes, you do, I have Crystal with me. Crystal, tell them your joke. (laughs) Yeah, if you have a pulse, then you have a parasite or more. And the thing about parasites is they're sneaky and even if they came back negative on a stool test that you did before, that doesn't matter, they can still be present. And so on this masterclass, we're gonna teach you all the tips and tricks that you might have heard of but didn't know how to use, like diatomaceous earth, pumpkin seed protocols, garlic and berberine and black walnut, because you can't do all of these things, but you need to select a few that work for you. So we're going to go through all of that in this masterclass. 
All right. And my son created a new site. It's called Non-Toxic Family. And if you're not following, go to nontoxicfamilynow.com or on Facebook, go to Non-Toxic Family. You'll see my son. He does all these great videos on how to be healthy. They're really great. And we actually put the mat free masterclass on this site. So it's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass and sign up for free. Look forward to seeing you guys. I want to read this next question to you. It's from Andrea Kirkpatrick in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I finished your book, One Meal in a Tasting. I'm at my ideal weight and I have nothing left to lose. That's the good news. I know the bad news. I know that I have heard you say that you have psoriatic arthritis and I'm very frustrated with joint pain too. I have an autoimmune issue as well, rheumatoid arthritis. And I've been watching on TikTok it says every video I watch is on castor oil. So I've been using ca a castor oil pack every night, but I'm either constipated or have diarrhea fluctuating. I've eliminated everything, no gluten, no dairy, no nightshades. I drink clean water. And then she just goes on and basically says nothing's working. So it's kind of two different things in there. I want you to talk about, do you think that, you know, autoimmune issues um, that she's talking about, this joint pain, and, and I have psoriatic arthritis as well. Do you think that that is directly related to um, gut issues? And then I want you to talk about this whole idea of, you know, constipation, diarrhea, kind of flop, flopping back and forth and never getting that perfect soft serve stool that you want because you're just either constipated, then diarrhea, constipated, then diarrhea. So, I, I mean, it's beyond, I mean, my opinion is 100% yes, that autoimmune conditions are directly related to gut health, but you don't have to believe me. You can just read the science, which is, you know, what I did. So, uh, Alessio Fasano started studying this in the early 2000s, but essentially, in order to have an autoimmune condition, you essentially have to have leaky gut and you have to have a trigger, whether it's a, an infection or a trauma or something. And so, between the combo of a of a trigger event of leaky gut, and then you get this this autoimmune cascade basically that begins to happen. And the majority of, I mean, every single autoimmune conditions that's also been studied for gut permeability, which is what they call it in the research, or leaky gut, it, it's always there. It's always there. So they are 100% connected. Um, it does not mean that, like, say you're uh, autoimmune conditions in remission. It does not mean that you currently have like a gut condition, but it doesn't mean you don't either. Um, and so, uh, yes, gut is a hundred percent involved with the immune system and the flip flopping and the fact that like, look, this this woman should be praised. She is working so hard to feel good, right? Like. Cast, I hate castor oil packs. I'm a hot sleeper. And like those things are just like a a, a slimy wet blanket on me. I hate them. Um, they work really well for certain folks. I'm not saying they're bad for you. I'm just saying personality wise, I can't do it. Um, and so she's doing that. She's doing all these elimination diets and she's still having uh, alternating IBS issues. And so she is a definite, a definite like perfect person to do what we just talked about the HCL challenge and the enzyme challenge to figure out her ideal dosage. Because again, constipation is a motel, a motility problem of slowness. Diarrhea is a motility problem of fastness. Mm -hmm. They're both centrally a root cause issue of motility related. And so while they feel, I mean, I've had both, they feel completely different. They, they operate different. You would think they're not related, but they're highly related to a central so a central core issue. And so uh, also anytime somebody continues to eliminate food groups and really doesn't see much relief, and, and especially if it's like decade or not decade over decade, but month over month or year over year, that that says that we're not, we're missing something, right? Like these are normal foods. Tomatoes are nightshades. Um, mm -hmm. Blueberries are nightshades. Uh, it depends on how sensitive you are to nightshades, but these things are normal foods for humans to eat, and they're they're highly, you know, technically good for us in many ways. And so, if you can't process food, that says more about your body's ability to process all foods 
than it says about the food itself being inflammatory or not. And so I, I feel like that's a conversation not being, it's not being happening ever. It's not happening on podcasts, not happening on TikTok, it's not happening anywhere, which is like, wait a second, are we able to break down anything? Like, is the stomach working? Is the enzymes working? Is the, the butyrate working? Like, these are central assumptions that no one's questioning. And I feel like a lot of people are doing a lot for their health and not seeing results because of it. Mm, that's so good. Because I have a friend of mine and her daughter has eliminated. I mean, when I say she's eliminated, it's gotten to the point where, you know, she has eliminated everything. And that actually has produced other problems because when you start eliminating so much stuff, then you're missing essential nutrients that you need in your body. And now you're not feeling good because of that. A hundred percent. And you're cut out of all like social interactions, right? Especially if you're a child, how can you be a child? So yeah, in, in the cases of, of, of people like that, we're blaming the diet, but we should be looking at, is the stomach working? Is the small intestine working? Is the gallbladder working? Um, is the, the, the butyrate and the microbiome working? Oftentimes the answer is no, which is why they're unable to tolerate basic foods that have sustained humans for thousands and thousands of years. Mm. Well, one of the things that I love about your products is that you have no fillers, they're non-GMO, it's organic when possible, um, and just the quality of what you have. Tell us what's like, if you know, one of the things I've heard people say, and I even feel myself, it's funny because on my kitchen counter, I just, we kind of updated our kitchen a little bit. And I was looking at all my supplements and on my kitchen, I have like probably like 80 different supplements. And I'm like, this is insane. Like we've got to limit this down. So if someone says, you know, I'm taking way too much stuff. Give us your top three. Let's just say people, you know, the things that you see them, the biggest, problem that they have besides obviously the HCL to me the HCL and the digestive enzymes that has to be number one would you not agree that yeah that's I think that's one? that's like core to anything yeah yeah core to anything so that's number one right after that give us the top three other things like if someone really does have leaky gut and some of these gut issues what's the next three best things I don't know I mean it's it's I'll 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 just say that this is going to be simplified, right? And so you're going to have to run it through your own filter of your own body. But um, I would say that the most universal best thing that everybody else is missing is is butyrate or or tributyrin is the best molecule of butyric acid. Um, think of butyrate as like, you know, where it's kind of universally accepted that magnesium is usually deficient in most people because the soils are depleted, and it doesn't matter how hard you're eating organic, uh, plant-based or organic, uh, carnivore based, like your chances of getting the full amount of magnesium are like slim. Um, that's very similar with butyric acid. Like the chances that you're making the proper amount of butyrate from your microbiome are like really low. And if, and if you are making the proper amount, having a little more isn't necessarily a bad thing. And so it helps with, uh, it's a link to basically everything. It's linked to neurodegeneration. It's linked to osteoporosis, linked to asthma. Um, if you have conditions like this, uh, you could be low in butyrate. And, and it's so easy to be low in butyrate because you got to eat so much vegetables and prebiotics and things like that to make it. Um, so I would, I would start there. I would say that's like such an easy uh, yes as an as a anti-aging tool as a, just a feel better tool for everybody. Um, I think it would be silly for me not to say magnesium now that I've already said how deficient it is for everybody. Uh, there's lots of different forms of magnesium. Uh, we have the strongest, cleanest version of glycinate in the world. Um, so ours contain about 50% more powder than uh, like elemental magnesium powder than anybody else. Um, but that doesn't mean glycinate's the perfect one for you. Uh, some people do really well on malate. And so play around with your, your magnesiums, try different forms. Um, a lot of people like to say magnesium threonate is the best for the brain. 
I haven't found that to be true in practice. Um, some people, like I said, if you want energy, malic, magnesium malate can be more energizing than three and eight. If you want like relaxing, uh, like, you know, like sleep orientation benefits or mindfulness based benefits, um, then glycinate seems to be much better than three and eight. So just find the right one for you. And then the dosage, like make sure to try like 300 to 500 milligrams um, of elemental magnesium. There's uh, the back of a supplement bottle. A lot of people don't know this. The back of the supplement bottle is not health advice. It's legal advice. That is heavily re regulated by the FDA, um, what a supplement company can put on the back of their bottle. And some companies are not labeling their magnesium correctly, and the FDA is beginning to crack down on them. So it should say in it should say magnesium and then that amount, and that's what's called elemental magnesium. And so you want that number to total 300 to 500 would be the range. Um, you don't want the complex uh, to be in that range. So I would say those two, and then... You know, another one, and I, I hate that it's so boring, uh, is, is fish oil. <laughs> it's so boring and you can't feel it. Like magnesium, you can feel. If you get the right magnesium, like if you take ours before bed, I, I guarantee you, or, or we'll give you your money back, you'll feel it. Um, fish oil, it's so hard to fit, like feel fish oil. Um, but if you do some of the omega testing, and you're having these inflammatory uh, autoimmune conditions or any sort of inflammation uh, on the skin or in the lungs or whatever, oftentimes we don't have enough omega-3s because a lot of us aren't living next to the ocean. We're not living less next to a lake that we're fishing all the time. And we need that for brain health, for cellular health. And so it's super boring. And I hate giving boring ideas because I like the exciting stuff, but that's just kind of like, if the if the you know playing the game if you're stuck on an island you can only take three things mm, yeah and i would say you guys that for me personally the holozyme um which is the digestive enzyme the hcl guard which is the you know for the all-in-one stomach support um to me is the, is I, if i had to rank it it'd be hcl guard number one holozyme number two and then the tributyrin x um, would be number three. Those would be my three that would be like, do not pass go, do not collect $200. You've got to get those and and get it. If you any undigested stuff in your gut, that's what you need to do. So we are out of time. We have a huge discount for you guys. So you need to make sure that you use the code Chantel Ray so you can get a huge discount. The links will be in the show notes. So make sure you go check those out. And then if listeners want to find you or follow you, Stephen, tell them where they can do that. Uh, yeah. So I'm on TikTok, uh, Healthy Gut Guy or healthygut.com is our, our website. And uh, those are the two biggest channels I'm focused on. Awesome. Well, it's been so great having you. You are a wealth of knowledge and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>